Right, so welcome to this video. I'm Bob Earnshaw and this channel is all about motorhomes, motor caravans and occasionally caravans. So if you just bought your first motorhome or you're thinking about buying a motorhome then this video is for you. So this is a series of videos for people who are new to motorhomes and if you're already a motorhomer and you're very familiar with motorhomes please stick with us. You never know, you might learn something and I'd ask you to watch them because you might want to leave some comments on uh, some tips that you've learned over the years. Uh, leave your comments below and that will help the new people to motorhomes and motor caravans because I have a feeling uh, this hobby is going to get very very popular. So a motorhome or a motor caravan is a vehicle made up of two parts and the first part is the motor and normally the motor is based on a commercial vehicle commercial van and uh, the other part of it is obviously the caravan part of it and a lot of the interior of motorhomes or motor caravans is very similar to a caravan. What I'm going to do is I'm going to split this into uh, a few parts probably about four parts and the first part is going to be about the motor the second part is going to be about the caravan and finally I'm going to be looking at packing driving, setting up at a campsite, arriving at a campsite and finally generally what it's like to own a motorhome. So this first part is about the motor. So let's go outside and have a look. place to fill your oil ah, is there. Ah, it's quite stiff. There we are. And your dipstick down there. So here's the dipstick. Yeah. Gap between there and there. So that's okay. Alright, so your screen washer fluid. It's actually in here. You put your finger in there and there's a pipe that pulls out. Get hold of it. It's a little bit difficult to get hold of. There's like a pull thing there. That pulls out. Funnel in there. And there's some screen washer fluid in there. Not got much left. I need to get some more. Right, to, rem to get access to the coolant fluid and possibly the brake you need to remove this cover there's some clips here that you turn anti-clockwise and this cover pulls off he said and as you can see quite a job to get off best to push it from underneath there we are yeah, so it's got a clip along there and along there. Get rid of the rubbish. But that gives you access. That's the power steering fluid. And the coolant fluid. That's it. Clip it in and turn those three. Now if you ever have problems with the battery going flat, you need to know where the battery connection points are. Now the first one, the one for the negative, is actually this stud here, which is quite easy to, as it says, it's only for jump start. And the other one is this clip here, which is actually quite difficult to remove until you realise you need a screwdriver to do it. Yeah, just put a screwdriver in there and that comes up. And that there is your positive battery connection for your other jump lead. These are quite important. These are your drain holes. You'll find these in the corner. You think just make sure they don't get blocked in the autumn or indeed in the spring with blossom. Same one over there, slightly smaller one over here. You can see bits of blossom in there. 
one thing you might notice about this engine bay is there doesn't appear to be a battery so where is the battery now on this model you'll find the battery under the passenger side footwell having moved the carpet out of the way and get to this panel that involves undoing that clip there and you'll need a coin or something pound coin works really well that one That's the vehicle battery so you can see it's quite a quite a beast now putting it back it's a case of you to see there's a slot there you've got to get it in there get around the other side and do the other side let's turn them clockwise carpets on this fan incidentally are held in with like press studs you just find those push them down there's one there a couple over here at the back right the place to fill up with diesel is in here all you do to get the diesel cap out. Main key. Turn it. It just basically comes off. There's actually a place to hang it there, but I never seem to use it. That's there. And that's your diesel filling point. If your van has got a cap there, that's where the ad blue goes. This van isn't an ad blue van. Let's talk about tyres. There are there. So 225, that means the width across the tyre. 75 is the percentage that the depth of the tyre, i.e. from there to there, there to there, is of 225. So 75% of 225. I'll insert whatever number that is in here somewhere. R is uh, the radius and these are 16 inch wheels and the CP means they're camping profile tyres. Another figure of interest is this 116Q here. The 116 is the load index of the tyre and the Q is the speed rating. So as you can see they're fairly big deep tyres, not exactly low profile tyres. And the other thing about these tyres is that you can pump them up to 80 psi. Now I don't know any car size compressor that will go up to 80 psi. I think you'll struggle actually on four quarts to find something that will pump that up. So what I've got is a ring RAC tyre compressor that goes up to 100 psi. Now, one of the beauties of this kit is the length of the lead. You've got what should be a coiled lead here and a 100 psi portable compressor. Now it actually clips onto the battery. So you remember earlier when I said about the jump points, that's where you're going to put those. So the black lead goes on that point. And the red point goes on there. There's my compressor. Now you can see why you need a compressor with a long bleed. Like I say, these tyres go up to 80 psi. This says it's 64. I think this gauge is a bit inaccurate but what I normally do is I normally get this up to about 70 
just about 70 psi. That says 76. I'm quite happy with that. That says 66. Now the other thing you should check from time to time is the spare wheel. And certainly the pressure, because you don't want to be putting a flat spare wheel on you when you're going. So the spare wheel is located at the back of the van in this carrier system. And to get this out, push that ring up, that comes out. So it's coming out. Take the weight of the spare wheel, push that out of the way. Push that out of the way and then slowly lower it down. Yelch, mind your fingers. And then we can access the spare. Yeah. 78, that will do. And to get it back it's reverse, but this is the more difficult job because this is quite heavy. Get the knee under there. One clip. And the other clip. Make sure those rings are secure there. The other thing you might want to consider having fitted is a tow bar that does enable us to tow a small car behind the motor home, as specified in the options. And it's a Mimo Europe. Right, let's have a look at the controls. Let's start with the gear lever. The gear lever is a six speed manual on this van. You get reverse, there's a collar that you pull up, and it's over to the right. Very easy to, to drive with the gears, they're very easy to shift and it's nice because the gear lever is so close to the steering wheel so you don't have to go reaching far, change it and you can get some really good short shift changes with it, makes it feel a bit sporty even. In the centre we've got a radio, this is the Fiat standard radio with standard warning. And one of the others. So you've got the radio, you've got uh, media as well, and what that is, is down here, there's a USB socket, and you can plug your phone into that, or if you're a bit more old fashioned, an iPod, or a USB stick, and you can play that over there. If you, if you press it again, you can connect your phone and it allows you to make hands-free calls on it. So the radio itself is a DAB radio a and FM and AM. Yeah, so you've got your heating controls, turn that up for hot, turn that up for down for cold, uh, the blower controls there. Got your air conditioning button there. Over here you've got your recirculating control so that keeps the air in, in the van that lets air in and obviously the various sort of positions that you can have it in coming at your at your face face and feet feet only demist and feet and demist typical sort of thing that you have in any any car your blower control your fresh air vents are up here you know, so you open them that's open that's closed you've got one there one there one over there there's a couple of controls down here that are worth sort of pointing out. This one here looks like it's a heated rear screen. Now there's no rear screen on this van, but what that does is it defrosts the mirrors, the heating elements in the um, in the mirrors out there. This button here is quite useful. If you're staying in the motorhome and you want to lock the doors, you press that and that locks all the doors. You can hear them all go. So that's the side doors and the 
what's called the habitation door to that door there and obviously if you want to unlock it press it hazard in. lights obviously controls. this fan has steering wheel controls this one does the volume on the radio mutes it if you want to have a conversation over the radio on this side you got the controls for making phone calls hanging up making a call and um, that one selects which station just move which station you're on so on the left hand side of the steering wheel bit difficult to see you've got the cruise control so that's cruise control on that's cruise control off and the other setting I never use is the speed limiter you can this van you can set a speed limit so presumably that's useful if it was a you see that it's a commercial vehicle you don't want to go more than 50 miles an hour you can set that I never use that so you, you've got when you're going along and you want to set the cruise control you do is you push it up you just push it up and that sets the cruise control whatever speed you're actually doing if you want to slow down you just hold it and the van slows down conversely if you want to speed up you just hold it and the van speeds up over here you've got the lights that gives you an indication on the dashboard the lights are on the little green light tells your lights are on all lights are off and over on this door you've got obviously you've got your indicators so going left going right lights on and you've got two two things here if you give it a quick like that that's a flash and if you hold it it switches to main beam if you just hold it that switches to main beam it's quite eight. over here obviously you've got the ignition so turn it and switches the ignition on there's also a switch here and it's a bit difficult to show you but if you push that in and turn it that isolates the battery there's a sign over here that tells you what to do so you you have to have it on the battery position there is a battery position and you push it in and it turns the battery off I've never used it but if you're in storage that actually might be quite useful over here there's a couple of things couple of switches here rear fog lights that one and these are for adjusting the headlamp up and down but the other thing about these two buttons they are for the, the dashboard menu right let's have a look at the dashboard menu now with the ignition on if you press this button here it gets you into the menu and you can go through the menu with these buttons up and down through the various options and you press that button to actually get in the sub menus so let's let's start at the beginning speed beep that's if you want to beep when you get to a certain speed and you can choose the speed so I'm just pressing them down and up so if you want to beep when you get to 80 miles an hour go OK if you don't which I don't set it to off press the mode button down again trip B data now trip B data is useful if perhaps if you're going on a European tour and you want the trip A data to record the mileage uh, for and consumption for all of the um, all of the journey and the trip B data for your, your days out if you like you can actually use that I do use the trip B data so if you want that on next one is setting the time very useful press the mode button and up and down and you can choose the hour press it again up and down you can choose the minute set the date mode button uh, you can step through the years mode button gets the month gets the day and back down again auto close now that's a useful function uh, because what that does is it locks the all the doors it, do, it does a central locking once you reach 10 miles an hour I've got it on and I find that very useful it's a, a good security uh, thing to have uh, because as soon as you start traveling your doors are locked 
as if you stop at the traffic lights you don't want people reaching in and grabbing your wallet or whatever now units if you go into the units menu you can change from miles to kilometers if you change to kilometers and then you go down you can change the consumption you can have liters per hundred kilometers or kilometers per liter I think that's the more common one and that's useful if you're on the continent if you go on the continent you want to go into that menu and change it and it also gives you the access to change into centigrade or perhaps Fahrenheit but the problem of course now is that you can't get out, out of this menu because you've set the units to kilometers so what I do switch it off switch it back on press the mode button you back into the menu and press the right button that's it and then go down to past units the next one is language actually I want to set the units back to miles so I press the mode button distances miles so I've set in miles now so I'm happy that turn it off turn it back on I'll just go back down past units language we're not going to change obviously it's useful if you speak different languages buzzer volume that's this buzzer you can change that press mode to get out of there and now the service uh, menu this tells you when the next service is due so my next service is 27,483 438 miles rather and strangely enough it's 408 miles for the oil service and why it should be slightly different I don't know but it's a useful indicator if your service needs to be done now I don't think I'm going to be doing 27,000 miles before the next service I tend to get the services done every every 10,000 miles but uh, I did have a case where a garage didn't reset the service indicator I was in the middle of France and a warning came up that you need to get your van serviced get your motorhome serviced and uh, which was a bit of an inconvenience because it then goes into a limiting mode and uh, eventually uh, you can only drive at 30 miles an hour or something ridiculous and I thought I'm in the middle of France so I actually went to a garage in France to get this sorted so it's worth having a look at look at that and uh, see what you need to know you can switch the passenger airbag off I'm not going to mess with that but yes you can switch the passenger airbag off reason you might want to switch it off is if you've got a child seat in the passenger seat and finally exit menu press and you're back out so that's the dashboard menu this motorhome is fitted with a rear view screen uh, which which only really comes on when I'm driving obviously I'm not driving at the moment but it has two views when you put the van into reverse it has a down facing camera and when you're driving it has a rear facing camera so there's two cameras on this van and I'll show you that there are some really good driving mirrors on the Fiat Ducato I think they're amongst the best I've ever used and uh, they give you a really good clear view out the back and they've got two parts to them and they're controlled by this little device here so if you turn it to the first position that's the right mirror and that's the top mirror in there and if you adjust that that adjusts that mirror turn this to the back position and that's the wide angle view at the bottom and that's the blind spot mirror it's a good idea to actually have your weights and dimensions in a place where you can find them easily so that you can check that you can fit through a gap or you're not overweight so I've got all mine printed out on a little label just on the sun visor it's easy to <laughs> How big is that bridge? So the weights are interesting for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, you don't want to have the motorhome 
over its maximum weight obviously because you could be fined for that plus it might be more dangerous driving it overloaded so it's useful to know what your maximum permitted weight is now what I've done in the past is I've taken a motorhome to a public way bridge to get it weighed and uh, that way I know whether I'm within the maximum weight limit now this van as it was specified from the manufacturer had a maximum weight of 3,500 kilograms and one of the things that put us off buying this van when we first saw it although we liked the van was the fact it didn't have much of a payload Now the payload is the difference between uh, the mass in running order that's with uh, the basics or, or the or the equipment and a driver and half a tank of fuel and various other things anyway the manufacturer specifies a mass in running order and also a gross vehicle weight the gross vehicle weight on this as standard is 3500 as I said which gives it around a two round about 200 kilogram payload which to be honest is just not enough to drive anything heavier than 3500 kilograms you need a C1 on your license so have a look at your license and check if you've got C1 entitlement you will probably have C1 entitlement if you started uh, if you passed your test before the 1st of January 1997 and you inherit what's called grandfather rights because everyone had C1 entitlement in those days if you pass it after that you're more likely just to have the B class entitlement which allows you to drive up to 3500 now I was able to get this um, this van up plated to 3850 which gives me a lot more payload I think you can see from my little uh, set of figures up there I've got nearly six I've got over 600 kilograms payload now which is more than sufficient for two people and a dog so what are the speeds that you can travel in a motor and what are the legal speeds? There are some differences and the key thing is to do with the unladen weight of your motorhome or motor caravan. And if your motorhome or motor caravan is not more than 3.05 tonnes maximum unladen weight, he says looking at his notes, in built up areas it's 30 miles an hour same as everyone else on single carriageways it's up to 60 miles an hour depending obviously on these signs on the road on dual carriageways it's 70 and on motorways it's 70 if your motorhome if your motorhome or motor caravan is more than 3.05 tons unladen weight then there are some differences it's 30 miles an hour in built up areas as before. On single carriageways, it's up to 50 miles an hour. On dual carriageways, it's up to 60 miles an hour, and it's 70 miles an hour on motorways. And it's worth adding to that that if you are towing something, and we sometimes tow a small car behind the motor, the motorway speed is reduced to 60 miles an hour and you're not allowed in the outside lane if you're towing. The final thing I haven't covered is the handbrake. Which is a little bit difficult to show you because it's actually on the right hand side between the, the driver's seat and the door. It's quite easy to use. Some people find it a bit of a stretch down down there. But, uh, and it, it goes down quite low and it's purposely made to go there because these seats swivel and I'll come on to that in a minute let's just have a look at some of the controls on the on the seat again this is quite difficult to show you but you've got two like flat things here and what they do is that lifts the front of the seat that allows you to tilt back on the front of the seat so if you want the front of the seat I'll show you that <laughs> it's quite difficult to show. I've got the lever, lift the lever up, and it allows you to sort of tilt the front of the seat up. And I normally have it in the lowest position. And the other one allows you to, see, allows you to <laughs> tilt up the back of the seat. So you take weight off, and the back of the seat comes up. So if you want to adjust the height of the seats, that's what those two 
levers down here are. At the front of the seat, again this is quite difficult to, to show, you've got a big bar here, push the bar up and you can slide the seat back and forward so you get in the right position. Also down here is this knob here and that adjusts the backrests for the seat. So puts the seat back or forward. Got armrests, double armrests. There we are. And they've got an adjuster here, under here. And you turn that one way or the other and it lifts lifts the armrest up. I'll turn it the other way, lets it down. Okay. Same on this side. Adjustment. And you can get quite comfortable. These seats are very comfortable um, and they're designed for long distance travelling so plenty of adjustment in there. The one thing there isn't in these seats, and some seats do have them, is there's no lumbar adjustment and I guess that's because it's got armrests both side but it doesn't matter, you know, the lumbar adjustment is this thing here and like I say these seats are very comfortable. And the final control on the seats is this one here. You push that catch back and you can swivel the seat. So like that and then you can just turn the seat. You need a couple of hands to do it. And the seat turns around. And now you've got your passenger seat facing into the caravan part of the motorhome. And you can do the same on the driver's side, but what you do need to do is you just need to let the steering wheel go down to its lowest position. And there's a catch under there. Pull it and push the, the steering wheel down. The steering wheel only adjusts up and down, it doesn't go backwards and forwards, just up and down. So you've got your lever there. And then sometimes Depends how far back you've got the seat, you might need to just pull it forward on the, the lever down there and you twist it round and just push it back a little bit. And that does mean that you can get comfortable in these nice comfortable seats and you can put your feet up. There we go. So that's it for this video, I hope you found it useful. Um, if you did give us a thumbs up, remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon, the notifications icon, and that way you'll get an update when I release the next video in this series. And the next video we're going to be looking at the caravan part of this motor caravan.